TNS, we're an infrastructure provider uh, globally, and we've been on a path the last five years of building out our, our new managed hosting low latency infrastructure and expanding it out globally. Um, and we're getting to a point where we have coverage for most of the world's major markets. We're still continuing on that expansion trend. Um, we recently launched a managed hosting offering in uh, Madrid for the BME um, and in Johannesburg for the JSC Stock Exchange. And we're continuing over the next year to expand that into uh, Stockholm and, and down into Sydney. We're still working on that path and trying to just expand our offerings so that we have uh, you know, infrastructure available wherever anybody needs it, whatever market they're trading. Up until now, it's been you know, kind of your standard issue hosting where we provide uh, co-location space, hosting of customer servers, market data, uh, WAN connectivity. We connect over 130 exchanges globally. Um, we have a, a network of financial extranet with 2,000 endpoints on it. It's by and large been expanding that into these new markets. The trend we're starting to see evolve more though is that now people, there's a mandate uh, for people to move their infrastructure into the cloud. Um, and that can mean a lot of things, right? You're seeing a desire to move into the public cloud, you know, to a large extent driven by some of the, what some of the exchanges are doing, seeing me partnering with Google Cloud, NASDAQ with AWS. But the conversations we're having is we're finding that you know, the public cloud is not necessarily fit for purpose for what our customers need. So we've been working with them as we expand geographically to also bring to market um, solutions to address that, that cloud need, both in a way that gives customers the benefits of the cloud, the agility, uh, the lower cost, the faster time to market, but without sacrificing the performance that they're used to uh, with the historical infrastructure that they've built out. When it comes to procuring switches and network infrastructure equipment, we used to be able to get equipment sourced in a matter of weeks. Now we're finding that the timelines from our manufacturers is a year or more, which you can imagine as you're planning either an expansion of your business or if you're dealing with exchange mandated migrations, such as what uh, just went on with your next in Bergamo or what the LSE is going on with right now, it's tough to plan that far ahead and make sure you have the equipment on hand to uh, handle and manage those migrations. Um, so it's a risk that we're seeing amongst our customer base. They may not be able to enter a new market that they otherwise would have wanted to or cope with these exchange migrations because they can't just can't get hardware. And that's a trend we expect to accelerate actually going into 2023. Or we fit in as TNS with our scale and our buying power, we have the ability to keep inventory on hand so that when these, either a, a hot new market pops up or an exchange mandated event occurs, we're able to react to it comfortably because we have the hardware on hand, whereas you know, some of the firms we work with, have, you know, they run into legitimate problems where they just can't source hardware. Because um, again, it's, it's a year, if not more, uh, before they can receive it. Blue Ocean is an example of where these exchanges that do have a desire to move into the cloud, but they need a cloud that actually that is, hits their performance needs, um, has deterministic low latency, can handle large amounts of data, you know, it's not necessarily available in the public cloud. So with us rolling out our public cloud offering, Lotion is an example of where we're now able to partner with exchanges to help them execute on that cloud strategy they have as well. Um, Lotion's been a great partner. You know, it's an interesting to see the evolution of the equities trading industry and start to get to that 24 by 7 model. We are seeing, it's bearing out, that there is a lot of interest to participate in those overnight hours, um, not just in the U.S., but, you know, we as a global network provider, we have a number of firms connected uh, through our extranet network out in Asia, and we are seeing a, a huge influx of Asian participants that are looking to participate in the overnight U.S. equity hours. When they think of ESG, they typically focus on power draw. How is the power generated? You know, how is the power in a data center? But there's another aspect, which is logistics, um, shipping equipment, sending uh, technicians on site in data centers. Um, that all carries with it a carbon footprint as well. Um, and it's something where we, again, with our scale, we can help minimize the impact of that because we can send one technician to work on multiple projects at once as opposed to an individual firm, you know, each sending their own person. There's kind of two aspects to it. It's both the mandates that are coming down, right, in a lot of respects, regulators and governments are defining the E and telling you uh, what to be sensitive about. But it's also, it's just a general ethos of our company is, right, do, do more with less. Find a way to be responsible stewards and be efficient in the, the power draw, how you operate. You know, that has benefit not just to, you know, sustainability and the environment in general, but also it's just, you know, it's a good practice and it can have, you know, practical implications in terms of reducing cost and you know, just, just doing more with less. And keeping a close eye on, on what you're doing and whether it's driven by a government mandate or just a organic effort to, you know, 
simplify your own operations and, and do more with less, right? It, it's can you be more efficient in how you deploy hardware, how you manage it, um, both with an eye towards environmental sustainability, but just an efficient, cost-effective operation of the business. There is actual government in the governance, right? There are mandates or guidance coming down from regulatory bodies, from the governments, um, but there's also an amount of uh, self-governance. Uh, looking inward and you know, without necessarily waiting for a mandate to come down to focus on you know, what you can do better either for the environment or just the efficiency of your operations. It's, it's, it's a combination of internal governance and the actual government governance.